Belgium, AP, as part of Western measures to reorganize the global oil market, prevent price spikes, and deprive Russian President Vladimir Putin of funds for his conflict in Ukraine, the European Union agreed to a price ceiling on Russian oil of $60 per barrel on Friday. This is an important step. The EU presidency, now held by the Czech Republic, tweeted that ambassadors have just struck an agreement on price cap for Russian seaborne hashtag oil after a last-minute flurry of negotiations. The choice is anticipated to be made even though it still needs to be formally approved through a written process. Poland delayed a deal for a long time by pushing for the lowest feasible cap. After more than 24 hours of consideration, during which time other EU countries had indicated they would support the agreement, Warsaw eventually gave in late Friday. Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kallas stated that crippling Russia's energy income is at the core of stopping Russia's war machine and added that she was pleased the cap was lowered by a few more dollars from previous recommendations. Each dollar the threshold was lowered, according to her, meant $2 billion less for Russia's war chest. The cap is set at $60, which is close to the current price of Russian crude, which recently dropped under $60 a barrel. That is criticized by others as not being low enough to affect one of Russia's primary revenue sources. Although it is still significantly below the global benchmark Brent, which dropped to $85.48 per barrel on Friday, it may be high enough for Moscow to continue selling despite opposing the idea of a cap. However, as the conflict in Ukraine enters its ninth month, there is growing pressure on the West to target oil, one of Russia's primary sources of revenue, in order to reduce the amount of money going into Putin's war fund and harm Russia's economy. After the demand for oil and gas recovered after the epidemic, prices skyrocketed, and the invasion of Ukraine further shook up the energy market, boosting Russia's coffers. The cap itself will have the desired effect of limiting Mr. Putin's ability to profit from oil sales and limit his ability to continue using that money to fund his war machine, according to John Kirby a spokesman for the U.S. National Security Council, who spoke to reporters on Friday. He praised the EU's agreement, claiming that the $60 cap per barrel is appropriate. This competes with the EU embargo, which may pull more oil supplies off the market and cause supply shortage and price increases worries. Every day, Russia exports almost 5 million barrels of oil. Putin has stated that he will not sell oil at a price cap and will take action against countries who do so. However, because Western consumers avoided it even before the EU embargo, Russia has already rerouted much of its supply to India, China, and other Asian countries at discounted prices. The majority of insurers are based in the EU or the UK, and they might be required to take part in the price cap. Even in those circumstances, according to Maria Shajina, a sanctions expert at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in Berlin, the quota would make it more expensive, time consuming, and onerous for Russia to sell oil in spite of the limitations. The price restriction should have been put in place this summer, according to Robin Brooks, head economist at the Institute of International Finance in Washington, when the price of oil was circling around $120 per barrel. Since then, the price of oil has undoubtedly decreased, and a real global recession exists, he added. Given the current state of oil prices, it is unlikely to be binding, according to reality. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's idea for a price cap was the focus of praise from European leaders.